guess what? It's time for your regular brain workout. Like real athletes, let's start with some warm-ups. Yeah. Look at these people carefully. Can you figure out who her husband is? It's the guy on the right. Have you spotted the girl's phone in her pocket? The man's photo is on the lock screen. Which of these women is not pregnant? It's the young woman in yellow. Her belly is actually a large pillow. Do you see it sticking from under a pullover? Now, which of these young ladies is not a princess? It's the gal on the right. You might have noticed that one of her fingers is green. She must be a creature from another world in disguise. And how about these two women? Who is not rich? It's the one washing the dishes. The Adidas logo on her sweatshirt is fake. A few very important documents disappeared from the boss's office. The police have three suspects, John, James, and Otto. Strangely, someone left a note in the office. Hmm, can you figure out who has something to do with the disappearance of the documents? It's auto. See for yourself. 1 O 2 T 3 T 1 O. Auto. Can you connect these four dots with just three straight lines if you aren't allowed to lift your pen while drawing them? Hey, you can do it this way. Yep, as easy as that. Now, you need to answer my question as fast as possible without making any calculations. Try to use your logic and nothing else. Today is Monday. What day of the week will it be 82 days from today? It's going to be Saturday. See for yourself, each day of the week repeats every 7 days. So after 84 days, it's going to be Monday again. It means after 82 days, it'll be Saturday. Marshall, Ted, Barney, and Robin were in Robin's house. Suddenly, the lights went out and one of the boys kissed Robin. Robin asked them who had kissed her, and the three guys gave her the following replies. Marshall said Ted had done it. Ted said Marshall was lying. And Barney said he hadn't done it. Just one of the guys Uh told the truth. Based on this information, can you figure out who kissed the girl? Barney kissed Robin, and Ted is the only person who is telling the truth. If Marshall's statement was true, then the last statement would be true too, which is against the rules of the riddle. If Barney's statement was true, then one of the other two statements would be true as well. So it means Ted is the only person telling the truth. In the world of mathematics, nine numbers from 1 to 9 wanted to reach the other side of the river. Since it was the world of mathematics, there were some rules. Rule number one, maximum of three numbers could cross the river at a time. Rule number two, the boat couldn't sail on its own. And rule number three, the sum of numbers crossing the river at a time must be a square number. You need to plan this process in such a way that the minimum number of trips is needed for all the numbers to cross the river.
you'll need seven trips to transport all the numbers to the other side of the river. It'll go like this. First, you send 2, 5, and 9. Altogether, that's 16, which is a square number. Then, you bring back 9. After that, you send 3, 4, and 9, the sum of which is, again, 16. 9 goes back. Then, it's 1, 7, and 8 that cross the river. 1 returns. And finally, 1, 6, and 9 cross the river. Ta-da! In the city of Brightside, 2% of people do not list their phone numbers. Now, if we select 20 random people from the phone directory, how many of these people will have unlisted phone numbers? Zero percent. Come on, if the number is in the phone directory, it means it's already listed. An ice cream seller has just two flavors of ice cream, chocolate and vanilla. The chocolate ice cream costs $2 for a scoop, while the vanilla ice cream is $1. Each customer is allowed to have only one scoop. Mary comes up to the seller and gives him $2. Without asking what ice cream she wants, the man immediately gives her a scoop of the chocolate treat. At the same time, when Ben comes up to the seller and gives him $2, the man asks him what flavor of ice cream he wants. Why? Mary gave the seller two $1 bills, so it was obvious what she wanted. But Ben gave the seller just one $2 bill, so the man had to clarify which ice cream the guy wanted. One day, four friends went camping in the wild. When they woke up the next morning, they realized they were in a parallel universe. The friends saw a tree with a small tunnel inside. It could take them back to the real world, but it was going to close in 16 minutes. They had one flashlight that had to be carried by one person. And the tunnel was so small that only two people could go through it at once. It'll take Mike eight minutes to pass the tunnel. Anna would need 5 minutes, Luke would spend 2 minutes inside, and Jack would only need 1 minute. Can you do the math? Luke and Jack should go first. Jack will return and wait until Anna and Mike walk through the tunnel. It'll take 8 minutes. After that, Luke will go back to get Jack. An expensive ring went missing from a jewelry store on the first floor of a large shopping mall. The manager called the police. After watching the CCTV camera footage, they had three suspects. A student, a woman with a 10-year-old daughter, and an elderly man. The student said he had agreed to meet with his friend next to the jewelry store. I didn't even set foot inside. The woman was furious. I was at the movies with my daughter here in the mall when everything happened. The elderly man said, Yes, I did enter the store. I felt unwell and asked for a glass of water. But I didn't take the ring. Who's lying? All of the movies running at that time had a 16-plus age rating. The woman wouldn't be able to watch any of them with her young daughter. One day, Cooper was relaxing at home when someone rang the doorbell. When the guy opened the door, he saw two police officers. They told Cooper his neighbor had called them. My neighbor insulted me. I jumped into my car and tried to drive away, but he chased me. Then he threw a stone and smashed my car window. Cooper was shocked and asked the police officers to let him have a look at the neighbor's car. After they all examined the vehicle, the police arrested the neighbor. How did they understand Cooper wasn't guilty? It was the windshield that was smashed. But if Cooper had been chasing after the car, the stone would have broken the rear window. 
Jack and John were twin brothers. They were burglars, and the police all over the country had been trying to catch them for several years. Finally, one of the brothers got into a trap after breaking into a wealthy businessman's villa. But police officers had a problem. They couldn't figure out whether they had caught Jack or John. The only thing the detectives knew was that Jack always lied and John always told the truth. How can they find out who the man is by asking him just one question? The question the police officers need to ask is, do you have a brother? If it's Jack, he'll lie and say no. And if it's John, he'll give a positive answer. Detective Dan Carlos was following a criminal who had stolen his watch. This person ran for a hospital building and disappeared inside. When the detective rushed through the doors, he saw two doctors examining their patients. One of them had to be the criminal he was looking for. But which one? It was the woman on the left. Her stethoscope earpieces aren't in her ears. Loki is hiking in a chanted forest. Suddenly, he gets into a magic trap. A wicked wizard, whose name is Olaf, offers him a deal. I'll set you free if you manage to crack all my riddles. First of all, organize these objects in order of invention. Olaf shows Loki a wheel, a lighter, a vase, a bow, and a light bulb. Can you help him put them into the correct positions? The bow is the oldest invention. Then goes the wheel, the ancient Greek vase, and the light bulb. And finally, the lighter. Next, Olaf shows Loki two pictures of his favorite fairy. Can you spot three differences between them? Here they are. The next task for Loki is to guess a word. Even when it passes in front of the sun, it doesn't cast a shadow. What is it? Wind. Olaf shows Loki a table with magic potions and ingredients. He marked all the ingredients with the colors that they create when added to the potion. Loki has to guess which ingredients were not used in these three potions. Can you help him? We need red and yellow for the orange potion. For the blue one, dark blue and white. And for the dark green potion, we need green and black. So the extra ingredient is the pink one. Yeah. Loki cracks the riddle, and Olaf asks the next question. What stones will you never find in a river? Do you have any clue? Dry stones. The next task for Loki is to serve the wizard's girlfriends. Roxanne says, I don't want my cocktail to have any yellow fruits or berries. Sabrina says, I want my drink to have an ingredient that starts from the first letter of my name. And Cassandra says, I don't want any green or red ingredients in my drink. There are three cocktails in the fridge at the moment. Can you help Loki distribute the drinks among the ladies? The second cocktail is yellow, so it doesn't have anything red or green. It's for Roxanne. The first one is for Sabrina, because it has strawberries. And the third drink is a blueberry milkshake, so it fits Roxanne's order. Oh, yeah. Olaf is satisfied with Loki's intelligence, and he offers him a job. Yeah. Loki agrees and becomes the wizard's assistant. Yeah. His first task is to clean the kitchen. Meanwhile, Olaf goes into the woods to collect some herbs. 
he comes across a toxic swamp and immediately gets sick. He needs a special potion. So Olaf sends Loki a letter with his crow. I need your help. Here are several recipes. Don't go anywhere. Prepare one potion and send it to me with the crow. Which potion should Loki make? Can you help him? Olaf says that Loki shouldn't go out, which means he can only use the ingredients that they have in the house. So Loki can't cook the first and the third potion. As for the second one, all the necessary ingredients are in her kitchen. Olaf gets better, but he still needs to stay in bed. So he sends Loki to the pet shop. The task is to buy a new cat. Olaf wants it to look like the cat that lived with him before. It must have green eyes and a one color tail. Also, it shouldn't have any black wool. And it shouldn't be tabby. Can you help Loki find the right cat for Olaf? Only this cutie meets all the requirements. The next day, Olaf sends Loki to a wild beach to collect some rare magic seaweeds. Suddenly, Loki sees a group of beautiful ladies standing on the shore. He wants to approach. But the ladies notice Loki and begin to move in the opposite direction. Loki runs after them on the sand along the water, but he can't catch up. Then Loki looks around and realizes that he was chasing fairies. How did he know? Loki ran after those ladies on the sand, but he can only see his own footprints. The fairies were flying. Loki dives under the water to collect the seaweed. He sees a little mermaid there. Then he floats to the surface and dives again. Can you spot three differences under the sea? Here they are. Olaf's daughter, Salma, is a talented young witch. She likes getting into trouble. And this time, she was put in jail. Loki comes to the police station to rescue her. Oh. He pays bail, and the police officer is going to release Salma. One of these ladies is about to be free. Can you guess who? Take a closer look at the photo in his hand. Salma has brown eyes, so he should release the second prisoner. Loki and Salma should go back to the wizard's house, but the enchanted forest has many unexpected surprises. There are three possible routes they can take. There's a fire-breathing dragon sleeping in the first passage. There's a young magician hanging out on the second road. He hates all women and he turns them into stones every time he meets them. And the third road runs through a toxic lake. Breathing its vapor is fatal for any living being. Which way is more or less safe? The guys can take the second route. Salma isn't just a woman, she's a witch. So she can deflect the black magic. The guys keep on walking and see an amusement park. The owner is very upset. Someone has stolen many tickets from the register. Loki offers to investigate this case. Hmm. First of all, he looks through the footage. He's sure that the thief is still in the park. He questions three suspects. Billy says, I rode the carousel and I got very sick, so I wouldn't ride anything else, even for free. Miles says, I'm celebrating my 17th birthday today. My friends and I rode the roller coaster three times, and now it's time to go home. Hmm. And Jessica says, I only visit the Ferris wheel. It's my favorite. Miles has tricked Loki. Oh. He's too young for the roller coaster. There's a sign. People under 18 years of age can't ride it. Uh -huh. Loki and Salma continue on their way and find three apple trees. Oh, yeah. Salma wants to pick some apples for a magic punch, but only one of the trees is safe. Can you guess which one? Oh. 
all the footsteps are leading to the first tree, but not a single animal walked away from it, so it probably has some hidden danger. There are some creepy runes on the trunk of the second tree, so it's probably cursed. Therefore, they should choose the third tree. The guys are picking the apples and putting them in Salma's hat, and suddenly they meet someone very curious. Crack this, Rebus, if you want to know who. A bear. The guys run away from the bear and hide in a cave. Oh, yeah. Luckily, Salma managed to collect 14 apples before the escape because they met seven hungry gnomes inside the cave. Oh. They demand payment for the shelter. How can Salma divide the fruits among the gnomes so that each gnome could get an equal amount of oranges? It's impossible because Salma doesn't have any oranges, only apples. Oh. Finally, Loki and Salma return to Olaf's house. Loki takes a look at the porch and says, Wait a minute, oh. something has changed since I last saw this porch. Look, I have a picture. Can you spot all the changes? The runes at the door are now reflected. The plant from this pot is gone, the curtains have changed color, and the number of candles is different. Loki enters the house and finds Olaf unconscious on the floor. Someone put a sleeping spell on him and stole his magic tools. Loki interrogates three suspects among Olaf's neighbors. Cassandra says, I just got home from a pumpkin festival. Everyone can verify my words. Ambrose says, I've been retreating and meditating in my basement for a week. I have no idea who did it. And Roxane says, it wasn't me, but I guess it was Cassandra. She's just jealous that Olaf decided to date me. Hmm. Who did it? Take a closer look at the witch's cauldron in Ambrose's house. There's an engraving saying Olaf's property, so he's the thief. Ah. Wake up, wake up, your brain workout is here. Put aside everything you need to do, it can wait. Take a few seconds for your mind to concentrate, and let's start. The first riddles are very simple, just to warm you up. But there's one condition, you need to give answers really fast. Now, a brother and a sister were born in the summer and in the winter. The sister wasn't born in the winter. The question is, who was born in the summer? Sister, but that was not my answer, duh. Alex is Charlie's father. Which of them was born later? Charlie. He's the son, after all. The giraffe is taller than the lion, but shorter than the palm. Which animal is the tallest? The giraffe, of course. The palm is not an animal, right? If you have a cube with each of its edges two inches long, how many total square inches are all its eight sides? Hard to say since any cube only has six sides. What is the correct way to say the yolk of eggs is white or eggs yolk is white? Neither way is correct since the yolk is yellow. 
When is a door not a door? When it's a jar? Huh, you must agree this is a good one. What can't fit even in the largest pot on earth? The lid of this pot. If you don't believe me, go to the kitchen and check it out. What can be standing and going? Standing and hanging, going and lying at the same time. A clock. Now, I've got a different task for you. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is not a teacher. Well, the lady on the left might not exactly fit the image of your average teacher. But she knows the students' names. Plus, she checks their grades on the phone and has a badge with her name. The second woman indeed looks like a grumpy teacher, but she is not. She's likely just someone's angry relative, scolding the students and holding the first thing she grabbed from the desk. Now your task is to answer these questions very, very fast. Let's see how quick your reaction is. What gets wet while drying? A towel. I'm light as a feather, yet the strongest person can't hold me for five minutes. What am I? One's breath. Where does today come before yesterday? Only in the dictionary. What can you catch but not throw? Cold. Take care, guys. What has a head and a tail but no body? It's a coin. What tastes better than its smell? Of course it's your tongue. What is three-sevenths chicken, two-thirds cat, and two-fourths goat? It's Chicago. What has words but never speaks? I'm talking about a book. Andrew had been sick for a week, so he asked his friend Jesse to take his books out of his locker at college. But instead of simply telling Jesse the three-number combination he needed to open the locker, Andrew asked him to look for a small note under his locker. After school, Jesse went to Andrew's locker and pulled the paper out. This is what was written on the paper. 24, 24, 22, Nine, 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 nine. Twenty-two, twenty-four. Twenty-two, nine, nine. Thinking this would be easy, but a little tedious, Jesse entered every arrangement of twenty-four, twenty-two, and nine he could think of, but the lock didn't open. Realizing there was something behind these numbers that he wasn't noticing, Jesse sat down for a few minutes to think it out. After some time, Jesse went to the locker, entered a combination, 
and the locker opened. What was the combination? It was 28, 4, and 17. Writing the 24th letter of the alphabet for each 24, the 22nd letter of the alphabet for each 22, and the 9th letter of the alphabet for each 9 give us the following letters. It is now clear that the combination is written in Roman numerals. And the only Arabic numerals corresponding to them are 28, 4, and 17. Three men were in a store when Susan noticed that oh, no. a pair of green pants was missing. Look at this picture and try to figure out which of these three guys stole the pants. It's the man on the right. Do you see something green sticking from under his dress pants? Four friends were hiking in the mountains. At lunchtime, it started pouring down. The friends hid in a cave. They decided to go a bit further away from the entrance to protect themselves from the chilly wind. When they were oh, already no. deep in the cave, Amelia discovered she'd lost her phone. The girl asked her friends to go and look for her gadget, and she was going to stay there and start a fire. In half an hour, the guys were back. James said he hadn't noticed a lake in the dark and had fallen into it. Oliver told her he had seen some bats, got terribly scared and rushed back. And Ethan nearly got lost. I'm so happy I've made it back to you. Which guy behaved suspiciously? Ethan lied. James was soaked through after falling into the water. But why was Ethan's hair wet? It looks as if he was outside in the rain, but decided not to tell his friends about it. Jackson was going to marry the love of his life, Liza. But one day before the wedding, his fiancée disappeared. Her room was a mess. On her bed, Jackson found a note with several hastily written numbers. Five, five, zero, nine, seven, one, zero. Jackson knew three other guys were in love with Liza. Jaden was a landscape designer and often sent Liza beautiful flowers. Luke owned a gas station and usually tanked up the girl's car for free. And Asher was a hairstylist and helped Liza with her hair. All of these guys wouldn't be above taking the girl away to prevent her from marrying Jackson. But just one of them was actually guilty. Who? Jackson turned the note over and realized it read, Oil Boss. It was Luke who had taken Liza away. Mr. Lawrence called the police. He said someone had taken his car for a joyride, had crashed it into a streetlight, and had then run away. The man was sure it had been one of his neighbors. The police questioned three of them. Ivy answered she had been at work and arrived home only in the evening. Cameron told the police he'd been helping his dad remove old stuff from the attic. And Aaron claimed he'd been hanging out with his friends, eating pizza, and binge-watching the latest series. After listening to all the suspects, the police officers arrested one of them. Who was it? It was Cameron. There's no attic in his house. He invented the whole story. Claire was the best student in her class. She was also friendly and kind. Her classmates loved how she always found a way to help them with tests. The end of the year math exam, though, was tough. During it, no one was allowed to be at school except for the students and several teachers. Students had to leave their phones in a special locker. It wasn't allowed to talk at all. If students needed to go to the bathroom, they had to do it one by one. And the teacher checked the bathroom after each student. Claire's classmates thought they were going to, to fail the test. But Claire had an idea. And when the students got their exam results, they saw very good marks. Their teacher knew the students had cheated, but how? Claire was the first to go to the bathroom. 
she wrote the correct answers on the steamy mirror with her finger. And her classmates read the answers by breathing on the mirror. There are three labeled wooden baskets. On one of them, it's written lemons. Another one says pineapples. And the remaining one claims that it has both lemons and pineapples. Hmm. All the labels are placed incorrectly. You reach into one basket and pull out one fruit. Will you be able to correct all the labels after doing it? Yes. Since the baskets are mislabeled, you know for sure that in the lemons and pineapples basket, you'll find just one type of fruit. So you opt to pick a fruit from that basket. If it's a lemon, this is the lemon basket. And since the pineapple basket is also mislabeled, it must contain lemons and pineapples. Then the remaining basket contains pineapples. The same logic applies if you pull a pineapple out of the lemons and pineapples basket. Can you find a mistake in this picture? Be very attentive. The dog is leaving paw prints of only two paws. How about this picture? What's wrong here? This guy is using the wrong tool. To cut this tree, he should be using an axe. Have a look at these girls. They all look perfectly normal. But one of them has recently robbed a bank. Can you figure out which one it is? Pay attention to even the tiniest details. It's the girl on the left. Look, she has lots of different passports on the bed behind her back. She's probably going to escape the country using a fake ID. Look at these nurses and try to figure out which one is fake. The first two nurses seem to have the correct pictures on their name tags. But the third nurse has the same picture as the second one, and she doesn't look like the person in the photo. So she is the imposter. Now, put your detective hat on and say which of these men stole the phones. The first two men have the phones they are selling on display. They don't hide them. And they also look very confident and proud of their business. The man on the right, though, is hiding the phones behind his basket. He also looks nervous. Hmm. Look at these men carefully. Who is the baby's father? Based on the baby's hair color and his beauty mark, the man in the middle is most likely his father. Your next task is to figure out which of these people stole the petrol. The woman in the middle is the culprit. Oh, no. Can you see petrol stains on her clothes? Look at this picture intently and try to figure out which dish could have caused food poisoning. Most probably, it was the combination of the drink and the burger. It doesn't look as if the guy even touched the pizza or the fries. James came to visit his friend Ethan. The guys were watching TV and eating pizza when James' phone rang. It was a sales assistant from his store who claimed there was a problem with one of their customers. 
James had to leave for a while. Soon after his departure, Ethan felt unwell and lost consciousness. When James returned, he saw that Ethan was lying on the floor and the apartment was in a mess. Ethan luckily came to his senses before the police arrived. He told the officer that the robbers had stolen all his money and electronics. The only question the detective asked him was if Ethan touched anything on the table after James had left. When he heard the negative answer, he immediately arrested James. Can you figure out why? There are ice cubes in the glasses on the table. If those were the same drinks the friends had been drinking before James left, the ice would have melted long ago. It means that James put something in Ethan's glass to knock him out, took all the money and valuables, and replaced the drinks with fresh ones before the police arrived. Luke had an older brother who was always teasing him, mentioning their age gap. When Luke finally went to school, he hoped that his brother wouldn't call him little anymore. But when the boy returned home after his first day of school, his brother started again. Primary school is for babies. Everything you learn is so easy. Then Luke decided to teach his brother a lesson. Okay, then how about you solve a riddle our teacher gave us today? Luke's brother agreed without hesitation. If you take away half of this number, you'll get nothing. What is this number? Even after thinking for a while, Luke's brother didn't manage to solve the riddle. Can you? This number is 8. Take away its top part, and you'll get 0. Littlefield was a tiny village where people didn't even get fines for illegal parking. But one day, something terrible happened in this quiet place. Mr. Richardson, a rich farmer, arrived at the police station, saying that two of his best cows were missing. There were three suspects, and each of them had to answer just one question. Have you taken your neighbor's animals? Mr. Anderson said that he had nothing to do with it, because he and Mr. Richardson had a common business, and he wouldn't risk their cooperation. Mrs. Martinez stated that she had been living in this village since birth, and she wouldn't spoil her reputation because of some animals. And Mr. Jones explained that since his family had been breeding pigs for centuries, he didn't have any reasons to steal cows. The police officer managed to figure out who the criminal was. Have you realized it too? The thief is Mr. Jones. How did he know it was cows that were stolen? Nobody had told him what species it was. Detective Scratch was called to investigate a case. A rich lady had disappeared right from her home and no one could find her. The detective had a list of suspects with the following names. Rooney, Messy, David, Chris, and Amanda. But apparently, the criminal was a fan of Detective Scratch, so they decided to attract his attention by leaving notes in different locations. Note number one was in the drawing room. The second note was in the art room. Note number three was in the vault. The fourth note was in the ice cream room. Yes, that lady was that rich. And note number five was in the dining room. All the notes had the same message. The clues you're looking for are where you find the notes. Detective Scratch didn't need much time to figure out what it all meant. How fast can you do the same? The person behind the disappearance of the rich lady was David. You just need to take the first letters of the rooms where the notes were found. D-A-V-I-D A precious gold figurine disappeared from Mr. Brown's mansion. He invited a private detective, since he suspected one of his relatives was the thief. Each of the suspects gave one statement, but only three of these statements were correct. Can you figure out who the thief is if the statements are the following? Uncle Jack. Uncle Jim stole the figurine. Aunt Mary. I didn't do it. 
Cousin Stuart. It wasn't Cousin Margaret. Uncle Jim. Uncle Jack is lying when he says I did it. Cousin Margaret. Aunt Mary is telling the truth. Cousin Mary is the thief. Oh, no. And the statements of Aunt Mary, Uncle Jim, and Cousin Margaret are true. Eric was locked in a room with 19 other people. Each of them could see the entire room and all the people inside without turning their heads or bodies or moving in any other way. To get out of the room, Eric had to place an apple in such a way that everyone but one person could see it. The guy managed to do it. Can you figure out how he did it? He put the apple on someone's head. Clever! Can you spot the odd emoji in this image? Yep, it's this unfriendly-looking one. It's not smiling like the others. <laughs>